Today I want to talk about motivation in video games, why we play or don't play games, and what people often mean when they say things like, this game lacks content, it needs more content before I'll go back and play it again. Now this is mainly going to be about Elite Dangerous, but it extends rather nicely to a lot of other games, especially massive multiplayer online games. I'm sure you can probably relate some of these points to whatever game you happen to be playing. So first of all, what motivates us to play games? Well, right off the bat, there's the novelty. Something new and exciting that you've never seen before. That captures you and pulls you in and you just want to see everything there is to see. But sooner or later, the novelty wears off. And then you're left with something else. Something else has to keep you there. The most common one is the reward-driven uh, reward gameplay, the carrot on the end of the stick. It was very popular for MMOs, for the Skinner Box or the Treadmill Grind, as it's often known where players are rewarded for doing various things in the game to keep them playing for longer. But this only works on certain types of people, and it only works for so long. Again, at some point, your game needs to have something else to keep players, otherwise they'll leave, especially the ones who burn through content faster than anyone could ever produce it. Again, MMO players. So, there are three main factors that come to mind, and a number of smaller ones. And the first one I want to talk about is called cohesion. This is the ability to make different mechanics in the game, different activities, link together and feel connected in some way. Now look at Elite Dangerous and ask yourself, is the power play update, the whole power play mechanic, does it feel like it's connected to the rest of the game world? Chances are you're going to say no, it really doesn't. It doesn't have a huge bearing on the rest of the game. A player who isn't subscribed to one of the power play factions largely isn't aware that power play exists and isn't affected by it other than a few small passive bonuses here and there. Another one is the CQC, the Close Quarters Championship. Now this is an arena shooter mode for Elite Dangerous that isn't part of the main game at all. You ha the only way in is from a separate main menu option. So when you load up Elite Dangerous, what comes to mind? You think, oh, I want to play some CQC, some Close Quarter Championship because it's fun and I enjoy it and you know I think it would be a good way to spend my time and then you remember that it doesn't tie into the main game at all so whatever goals you had whatever you were working on whatever ship you were trying to unlock or place you were trying to reach you're not gonna get anything towards that by playing CQC so there goes the reward driven motivation right away but it goes beyond that. It also loses the appeal for players who are attached to their ships or to their character, to their progress, to whatever. And it doesn't feel like they're playing the same game. It feels like something totally different and it's very easy to lose motivation to play something like that. When Power Play was first announced, a lot of people were hoping that it would add cohesion, that it would give you the motivation to tie various things together and make you feel like what you did mattered. And that leads me into my second major factor, and that's agency. Now, agency is the ability to effect change within the game world. It's the it, sometimes in some games it's just simply destructible walls. You know, the ability to knock a building down, and that's a meaningful change. In others, it's the ability to choose which political faction comes to power, or to choose who lives and dies, or who the team is made up of at the end of the game. Without agency. The game feels sterile, like you're an observer and nothing more. Like, there's nothing meaningful that you as a player can do to impact the world around you. And you see this a lot in Elite Dangerous, for example, by spending hours and hours and hours hunting pirates in the same star system for days on end, and yet there never seem to be any fewer pirates. There are always just as many, and there's no real change to the system, or just as many missions to go and hunt pirates. Even if you stay in the same resource extraction site instance, you could stay there literally forever and ships will continue to spawn literally forever. It doesn't matter how long you stay there, it will never dry up, you will never have to leave and go find somewhere else to hunt. There's no meaningful change here. In fact, the most you're going to get from killing the same faction of pirates over and over and over is that if they happen to own a station in the system, it'll greet you as a hostile but then still happily let you dock and sell you more ammo and fuel so you can go back and kill more of their members. 
power play in Elite, surprisingly, is the only real source of agency, of true agency. And yet it lacks the cohesion to really be motivating either, to certain groups of players at least. But simply put, agency is important, and without it, the player doesn't feel like they matter. That takes me to my third point, persistence, which is another way to make the player feel like they matter. Like things they do have a lasting impact on the world, or things that do change stay that way. Persistence is the difference between a side-scroller where if you run back in the direction you came from, the enemies are all there, or they're not. In a game with persistence, the enemies you kill are still dead and there's nothing there. In a game that lacks persistence, you go back and find those same enemies have all respawned already. Due to the heavily instanced nature of Elite Dangerous, it suffers from a very strong lack of persistence. If you've ever dropped into an unidentified signal source, or are the points of interest on planets, you'll find very quickly that they are randomly generated for you on the spot, and the moment you leave, they cease to exist. In many cases, you can't even get a player who's in a wing with you to drop into those same instances because they're generated just for you. Another way to describe persistence is think of the way Hans Moleman dies in The Simpsons on a regular basis, or the way Kenny dies in South Park every episode. And then when the next one starts, surprise, they're alive again and everything is reset back to the way it was. That's very, very common in Elite Dangerous. To reset a resource extraction site, everyone knows you simply hop out and back in, or log out and log back in. The same applies to the bulletin boards. The people collecting long-range smuggling missions will simply log out and log back in to refresh the available missions, and keep doing this until they have what they want. There's no persistence. Now all of these things lead to motivation, to long-term motivation, to an urge to keep the game and keep going back to it and continue playing it, even if you have experienced all of the content at least once. Now speaking of content, what do players mean when they say, this game lacks content, it needs more content? Well, really content in a game is just something to see or to do. An Elite Dangerous has 400 billion star systems to see and it has plenty of different activities to do, including various forms of combat, exploration, and trade. I have logged 300 hours in this game, and I have still to do all of the things that it has to offer, and I have only seen a very small fraction of the stars that are out there. So why, you might ask, are people saying that Frontier needs to add more content to Elite Dangerous, and what do they really want? Well, what they really want is motivation. They want those three things that I mentioned before, cohesion, agency, and persistence. And they lack motivation because the content in Elite Dangerous lacks one or more of those things. For example, with the Horizons expansion, why would I do a base assault? Well, a base assault or a ground assault is immensely fun, and it's a challenge, and it's enjoyable. But, once the novelty wears off, uh, you're down to reward-based gameplay, and the reward for something like that is a pathetic, pitiful payout. So now you're left with, well, does it have cohesion? Does it have agency? Does it have persistence? Like most of the other mechanics in the game, the base assaults are instants. The moment you leave and come back, that base will have respawned even a few minutes later. I think those respawn without leaving. And everything will be as if you were never there at all. It has no persistence. Blowing up the base doesn't change anything. You get paid out by some random source for destroying the base, and that's it. It doesn't matter, it doesn't mean anything. There's no agency. And it doesn't really feel like it's connected to anything else in the world, because it's generated randomly for you, and only for you. It's not a persistent place on the planet's surface. It's generated at random, as you move around. So when players say, give us more content, what they really mean is give us motivation to see and to do the content that's already in the game. In a lot of cases, that's a very simple change, such as rebalancing mission rewards so that they're, you know, rewarding, instead of just a joke. But in other cases, it's a, a massive undertaking. The way Frontier has chosen to go with a peer-to-peer -peer architecture means that instancing is sort of their bread and butter, and to do anything persistent is difficult at best. But the best example of all that I can give is exploration. Exploration has a little bit of persistence in that if you discover something first, you get your name written on it forever. Now that's pretty cool. But 
The biggest thing, the biggest question that a lot of explorers have is, why should I leave the drop-in point? Why should I fly all the way out to that distant star, that distant planet to scan it? What do I get out of it? The reward is not enough. It's a few hundred credits at best, maybe a few thousand. And all you're really going to get out of it is a screenshot. There's no in-game reason. There's no... The scan isn't interactive. It isn't interesting. You just point your ship and wait for it to complete. And that's all there is to it. Explorers want a reason to actually explore, to travel around the system, to see the sights, to drop into rings, to go see that gas giant, or to go land on that moon. They want in-game supported reasons to do those things. Not just to satisfy their own curiosity, or to take a pretty screenshot, or record a video. If players had a way to, say, log where they had been, to keep track of where they had been, and make notes on it with a bookmark thing, which is actually coming, by the way, um, it would be it would go a long way towards making the exploration trip more enjoyable to know where they were to have stats on what they visited and keep you know see a map of where their route was. Now imagine if players could get rewarded handsomely for flying into orbit down to near the surface or even landing and doing surface scans. Imagine if they could drop a beacon, a limited number of beacons with little explanations or warnings or cautions for other commanders who might happen upon the same system. These would give you reasons to travel to those distant planets, to do something interesting, to see something interesting. But as it stands today, the majority of explorers will drop into the system, scan what they can from the drop-in point, and then look around for Earth-like planets, other valuables, and then leave. And that's it. Even though they might say, hey, that planet over there looks really cool and I should go check it out, it's not worth the ten minutes it'll take to get there in Super Cruise, just so they can fly up to it and take a picture. Now there's one more factor behind motivation that primarily affects sci-fi and fantasy type games that I want to talk about because it's come up a lot lately, especially with the long-range smuggling missions and their popularity. And that's verisimilitude, or the ability to suspend disbelief. Now think about Star Wars or Star Trek. We know they're not real, we know they're not realistic, they, make, they cheat the laws of physics all the time, and yet somehow we're able to put it aside and go, yeah, okay, I can get into that. And the reason for that is simple. They define their own rules, their own limitations, and then they abide by them consistently. And the consistent part is the key. If they happen to break that consistency, you're thrown out of the moment. You're going, hey, hold on a second. They're not abiding by their own rules. This is bullshit. What the hell? That loss of immersion or loss of failure to hold verisimilitude is kind of a big problem in games like this. And it's happening very blatantly more recently, especially with the long-range smuggling missions that I mentioned. NPCs, non-player characters, are not abiding by the game's rules that do apply to player characters. For example, if you're trying to cargo scan a ship and it pops chaff, it will interrupt your scan and you will have to wait until that chaff is finished before you can complete your scan. However, if an NPC cargo scans you, Chaff does nothing. It does not interrupt their scan. It will complete as normal. Now, normally this hasn't been such a big deal, but lately there are a new type of mission where you have to smuggle goods halfway across the known gal or the populated galaxy without being cargo scanned. And it's somewhat frustrating when the NPCs are not subject or not bound by that rule that Chaff is supposed to interrupt scans. Now they also seem to ignore silent running, closing all of the heat vents on your ship to dramatically reduce your heat signature. For a player, this would cause you to lose your target lock, and the only way you'd be able to fire on them is with, by visual, to see them. But for NPCs, silent running doesn't seem to have any effect whatsoever. Their accuracy continues to remain deadly accurate, deadly perfect, and it doesn't affect their cargo scans, again, at all. The next one is NPCs are ignoring the limitations of fuel and jump range. Every ship has what's called a frame shift drive, and it allows you to jump from one star to another, and it's given a limited amount of range, and it uses a certain amount of fuel per jump, increasing the further you jump with a maximum range. Now certain ships, such as the one you, people tend to smuggle in, the ASP Explorer, can jump quite far. They can reach 35 light years, and even with a smuggling build, you're typically looking at 25 to 30. And they're being chased by an NPC in a ship that jumps 10 to 15 light years. And yet, somehow, 
It is keeping pace with them, system for system, star for star, all the way as they try to escape in a ship that shouldn't technically be able to jump that far. This ruins verisimilitude. It pulls you out of the immersion and says, no, you're, you're not abiding by your own rules. What the hell? Another one that is sort of impossible is the way NPCs tend to spawn at the perfect angle and speed to interdict you the moment you drop into a system. The moment you appear in front of a star, they're already trying to pull you out of Super Cruise. A player would never be able to pull that off. It's a one in a million thing, and yet it happens constantly with NPCs. You drop in, and it's like they're waiting in the exact right spot at the exact right speed and somehow had knowledge of it, even though they were in the system with you just a second ago and shouldn't be able to get to that system you're in now because their jump range shouldn't allow for it, and yet here they are. The best one of all, of course, is that this NPC who is chasing you as you try to smuggle your goods 350 light years away, he manages to interdict you, and you turn around and you kill him. Well, the next system you hop to, guess what? He's back. Huh. Now, like I said before, there are a number of smaller factors that contribute to motivation, especially in Elite Dangerous, and I could name many of them, but in the interest of keeping this on topic and somewhat brief, I'm going to leave it at that. So when people say Elite lacks content and they're not coming back until Frontier adds more things to do, what they really mean is there's lots of stuff to do and lots of things to see, but they have no reason to do it or see it. And what they're looking for is cohesion, to tie things together, to make them feel like they're all part of the same world, the same universe, not separate individual mini-games that stand on their own and have no bearing on one another. They're looking for agency, the ability to make meaningful changes within their game world, to decide what political faction comes to power, and for that to actually mean something other than the way a station greets you. And they're looking for persistence for whatever they do to not simply reset the next time they log in or the next time they come back to this area to actually show that what they did meant something that it had an impact and it stayed that way and finally they're looking for the game to be consistent within its own rules if it says the eagle can jump 15 or 16 light years then the eagle can only jump 15 or 16 light years, and for one to follow you 35 light years from one star to the next is not realistic within the game's own rules. And it ruins immersion, and it ruins motivation. As I said, much of this applies to other games very, very nicely, especially MMOs. So think about it. What other games are you playing? How do these things apply to that game? Does it have lots of content? Are you really just lacking motivation to see and do that content? What's stopping you? That's the real question. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.